I got Nerev Shabbos. I'd like to address the issues that people have raised and we'll start with issues that are closer to me and then I'll deal with issues that are universal. The issues that are closer to me are, are about the Lubavitcher Rebbe and some of the people out there have said some terrible things. Why do they say terrible things? Uh, they got upset that when supposedly their Rosh Hashiva said some horrible things about Lubavitch that I didn't say anything about him, but I said as a result of that, if it were the Bava Sali, the holy Rabbi Yisrael Abu Chatzira, he would not sleep overnight in Lakewood. Subsequent to that, I found out that Rav Malkiel Cutler did not say those things that he was reported to have said, and uh, I apologized, but I did not apologize on the concept that the Babasali would not sleep overnight in Lakewood, New Jersey, because of the terrible things that some of you out there have been saying with total disrespect. There's one thing, some of you attack me personally, okay, attack me personally, uh, I'm certainly not worthy uh, that I have to uh, go ahead and protect myself. But the Lubavitcher Rebbe was the Tzadik Hader, and he also was, that means he was the righteous man of the generation, the holiest man of the generation. And he was the greatest Torah scholar of the generation. It's not wide-eyed Hasidus that is saying it. I'm saying it after many years of study, of study of the Rebbe's ways. We'll discuss the, the method of the Rebbe, methodology of the Rebbe at totally different times. But the Rebbe was a far greater scholar and much more thorough than all of the people that uh, the people threw at me. But that's irrelevant. Those are great people. They are great rabbis. They have thousands and tens of thousands of students, have had influence on people, and they're going to have a lichtige ganeden. I have no problems with it. But when you go ahead and you besmirch the Rebbe because of your biases, the reason why I say biases is because none of you that have written to me or uh, communicated with me on the um, internet, none of you have really learned Hasidus. You quote some sources, but when I explain those sources, there is no response. Basically, you're either trolling me or you're very superficial. and You can't answer, so you throw dirt. This one said this, and this one said that. I'm not impressed by this one said that. First of all, you don't know if this one actually said that. Second of all, who are those people that they go ahead and criticize the Lubavitcher Rebbe? Let me tell you that when Rebbe Vadia, who is a great scholar, who is one of the greatest scholars of the last several hundred years, his knowledge is encyclopedic, incredible gift of memory, clarity, um, I know people don't particularly care for the depth of his ideas, but in terms of his clarity and his knowledge, he's unparalleled in this generation. When the Rebbe Vadya opposed the Rebbe regarding the candle lighting for girls, the Babasali, this was quoted and this is well known, the Babasali's family lives, so you can go ahead and and determine whether I tell the truth. Baba Sali said, Who is this fly going up against the Nesher HaGodl, the Lubavitcher Rebbe? Called Rebbe Vadya a fly in comparison. That doesn't mean Rebbe Vadya was a fly, but in comparison to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, he was a fly. So you have to understand that you're starting up with someone that you don't understand. You really don't know. You've never studied his works. And the, the small amount of, of, of stuff that you've said, you know, if you read, you really don't know what it says. You have to really take time out and not take an, an aggressive, you know, anti-position, just a, an open mind and see what the man says. His grasp of things is incredible. His clarity is also even more incredible. His ability to make things simple makes him one of the greatest scholars of the last several hundred years. And I mean that, one of the last several hundred years. I don't believe that there was a scholar in the last several hundred years that had such a clarity and made everything so simple and fitting in with each other. 
Now, uh, that's the words of a chassid. You don't have to agree. But I saw other people, many great people, who agreed with what I just said. That said, even if the Lubavitcher ever was an ordinary going and an ordinary tzaddik, if it's possible to say an ordinary tzaddik, those who opposed the Rebbe and called him names, his last name without a capitalization, and saying besmirching things. Let me tell you a couple of stories. From there you'll be able to understand the profundity of this person, Lubavitcher Rebbe. Lubavitcher Rebbe could look at people, know exactly what was going on with them spiritually, physically. I saw it myself with my own eyes. The following story in, illustrates, and it's a story that deals with a sofer that was a great Yerei Shemaim in Bnei Brak. There was a Lubavitcher Chosid who had a son who had been bar mitzvahed, and the son suddenly developed a, a severe situation, severe condition, and severe pain, and the doctors tested over and over again, could not find the source of the pain, but it was debilitating. The child grew weaker and weaker from day to day. They didn't know what to do, so they, like a chosid, they wrote Lubavitcher Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, B'dikas ha-tfilin. Check the tefillin. Check the tefillin. They sent the tefillin to a scribe. The scribe says, perfect. Send it to a, a second scribe. Perfect. A third scribe. Perfect. The boy got worse. Again, they wrote the Rebbe. And again, the Rebbe says, check the tefillin. This went on several times. And each time, the boy is getting worse and worse, more and more debilitating, eating up the parents completely. And the Rebbe's insistence was, check the tefillin. And scribes check the tefillin. The tefillin were perfect. Most beautiful writing they'd ever seen. So finally, he lived in Bnei Brak, this young man, this chassid. He went to Rav Vosner. And Rav Vosner, known as the Shevet Halevi, heard that the Lubavitcher Rebbe said that you have to check the tefillin. And each time the Rebbe was told that the scribes checked it and it was perfect. The Rebbe insisted, check the tefillin. So Rav Vosner said in, in the Munas Chachomim and Munas Tzadikim, he went and he was going to go ahead and call the sufferer in because there had to be something that was not meeting the eye. He called the sufferer in. The sufferer was a well-known Yerei Shemayim, God-fearing man. And Rav Ozner looked at him, looked at his ksav, looked at the way he conducted himself, he looked as a perfectly honorable Yerei Shamayim with a wonderful pen. And so he began asking him certain questions. And finally, he asked him the following. You know, it's customary among good scribes that when they have to write God's name, they go to mikveh. Do you do that? He says, yes. Well, he says, God's name appears many times, 42 times, in the, um, the Parshas, how is it possible for you to go 40 some odd times to the mikveh when you write a set of Parshas? Especially since you don't live right next door to a mikveh. The mikveh is not in your house or next door to you. What do you do? So the Sufi says, I thought about it and I devised a plan. I would write out the entire um, four chapters of the Tfilip, leaving out God's name, and then I would go to Mikveh and write out all the names of God afterwards. Now, of course, anybody who knows the halochas of Tfilin knows that this has to be written in order. If you leave something out and then go back and fill it in, it's not kosher. This young man apparently while he was quite a Yerei Shemayim and he had a beautiful Ksav, was not aware that it had to be written